program is brought to you in association with First National Bank of Botswana. The world is always in a constant state of change with new innovative solutions that are geared towards approaching business and growing the global economy sustainably. Amongst these solutions are environmental, social and governance initiatives or ESG for short. Not too long ago, ESG was dismissed as superfluous and unnecessary in whatever economic activity. Most recently, however, ESG became a nice-to-have part of an organization's business strategy. Today, however, ESG has become a must-have and is viewed as a huge opportunity as issues such as climate change pose a real risk to the value of assets of almost every company across the globe. Increasingly, asset owners, investors, asset managers and financial institutions are growing interest in incorporating ESG elements into their investment process, making ESG significant for equity capital. Whatever the case, each trend around ESG is now considered a stepping stone to helping corporates recover from the pandemic and achieve their 2030 sustainable goals. Moreover, ESGs are now hailed as the future of sustainability. Here tonight are Senior Manager Advisory Services Tato Sidirwa and Senior Associate Advisory Mompati Miller, both from Grant Thornton. Grant Thornton has a report out on sustainability of the future. So um, the primary focus really is to um, talk about environmental, social and governance issues, right? Um, in short, tell us what ESGs are and how they are now considered the poster child or the poster focal point for the future of sustainability. ESG really is just um, a criteria that is used to gauge um, company organizational performance in terms of environmental responsibility, in terms of social impact, in terms of their governance standards. ESG, think about it as uh, the core kids in the sustainability uh, playground. Uh, e for environment, S for social, and G for governance. Yes, um, they're quite important because they drive uh, different businesses sustainability in terms of, you know, those three different areas that I just, you know, touched on. Um, remember before, you know, the buzzword ESG was there, it was just only the talk of sustainability, yeah. but it was maybe perhaps too complex for uh, businesses to dissect them into what really, you know, sustainability is all about. Um, just to give a little bit more clarity, when you talk about environmental responsibility, we are talking about issues around climate change, we're talking about um, about issues around deforestation, waste management, greenhouse gas emissions, etc., etc. And when you talk about social impact, you're talking about factors such as labor practices, human rights, mm -hmm. consumer affairs, you know, community relations, and the likes. And when you're talking about governance, we are talking about board and management practices, we are talking about compensation structures, we are talking about equity and diversity, we're talking about corruption. So when you talk about ESG, it really covers quite a lot of considerations. But in the context of sustainability, ESG is really, it's like a compass. It guides companies and organizations towards sustainable practices because sustainability can be quite a, a broad term. It can be quite ambiguous. And it's normally used to talk about doing good. But when you bring in ESG criteria, you are helping companies focus on specific factors, which help 
you know, companies bring the idea of sustainability to life. Yeah, um, this has become a very hot topic right now. Um, Roundtable discussions around ESG, um, corporate discussions around ESG. But then this creates an opportunity for companies especially to run the risk of green or social washing, right? But sustainably and realistically, how can um, these companies, organizations, businesses, etc., get on this wagon without running that risk while doing so? That's actually one of the biggest um, issues around this, this topic, greenwashing or social washing. Greenwashing basically means when companies want to project themselves as, you know, being environmentally friendly or in the context of social washing, when companies want to project themselves as being socially responsible and doing good things for societies, which, you know, sometimes that's not the case. But there is, but the practice is quite prevalent, practice of greenwashing and social washing is quite prevalent, whether by purpose or not, it's, it's a different uh, conversation. But I think it comes from the fact that stakeholders are putting quite a lot of pressure on organizations and companies to make sure that their operations are sustainable, to make sure, you know, they want to see their ESG performance scores. So the pressure to greenwash or to greenwash or social wash is, is real. But what actually happens is that, you know, most companies have uh, corporate social responsibility programs. And there's a tendency to want to pass those as ESG programs. But really to try and make sure that as a company you are compliant is really to be proactive and intentional about your ESG agenda. You know, you need to be clear and transparent in terms of where are you playing in this, uh, in this area? Because it's really understandable that, you know, not all companies can do every agenda on the, you know, everything on the ESG agenda. So companies really need to choose uh, factors that align with their, with their values or with the kind of businesses that they are in. That really then helps them to, to focus and it helps them to gain clarity in terms of what the they seek out to achieve in terms of ESG. Uh, additionally, uh, something that is very important for businesses to ensure that you know they are aligned in, in incorporating the perfect ESG strategy is ensuring that they, they are partnering with the right experts. And they must also ensure that they they simplify it, um, the ESG agenda. You know, it can be quite a, a, a complex. Um, agenda so companies if they really see this from a point of how does esg actually apply to me mm -hmm. then it helps them simplify the agenda and also once they have actually decided what agenda they are pursuing then they should be able to to monitor it to to see you know to monitor progress to be able to measure it to be able to see how they can tweak it and make it, you know, and help them achieve the objectives. Um, you, you said something quite interesting there. You said that sometimes companies confuse um, ESGs with CSR. Perhaps at this point you could clarify the main differences between having a CSR initiative and um, actually having a C, um, an ESG project or agenda within the company. Okay, for example, you know, a CSR project or program can include, you know, forming a partnership with a, you know, a community group or sponsoring some um, sports uh, development agenda. But it's normally really just reactive or responding sometimes even to, you know, you know organizations knocking on your door and say, please help me do this. Whereas with, with ESG, you actually incorporate it in your strategy to say, as Grant Thornton, as part of our ESG strategy, we are going to ensure that we are energy sufficient. Mm -hmm. You know, we are going to ensure that we are energy sufficient. We are going to ensure that, you know, we, we give back to the community in this area. For example, you know, with some of our projects, we partnered in, you know, with some schools in the education space. Mm -hmm. In that case, you know you are pursuing energy sufficiency. And in our context, 
we have energy sufficiency because we use solar. Yeah. You know, all everything here is you know is powered by by solar. It was part of of a, of a broader strategy. So we went ahead and pursued that strategy. Um, but the Speaking about a perfect strategy, right? Most, if not all, organizations have risk mitigating strategies yeah. um, when they are adopting a new project, when they're doing anything really within their organizations. So perhaps we could talk about the considerations to, to have or to take into account when you want to adopt an ESG strategy. Thank you so much for that question. It's, very, it's a very important question. So the most important thing is for uh, companies or businesses to do like proper assessments. So this means that um, they have to be able to identify recent opportunities that are specific to industries that they operate in. Mm -hmm. And the second most important thing as well uh, within it, it's is to make sure that uh, ESG initiatives are incorporated within the risk management strategies that already exist within an entity. And the other most uh, paramount important thing, like I said, is to make sure that you partner with the experts in the field. That really now uh, brings it home. There are vast opportunities and advantages to adopting ESGs, right? Um, whether from a point of it being a risk mitigating strategy for a company or um, jumping into that as part of the value chain. Like you were saying earlier, solar panels, they need people to produce. But there are also disadvantages. Could you speak to the disadvantages that could come with adopting ESG or trying to venture into ESG adoption as uh, maybe a supplier, if you will? Um, I wouldn't say it's, it's disadvantages. Mm. Maybe there are challenges, yeah. you know, not, not, not necessarily dis disadvantages because really, you know, ESG is about, you know, reducing risk, you know, business risk. Yeah. So there are challenges that um, companies, organizations face. The first challenge could be the complexity, you know, of, of ESG uh, on its own. Yeah. So it's very important, you know, to make sure that uh, we understand the, the opportunities and risks that are specific to the business and also being able to partner with the right uh, experts within the field. So the other challenge uh, could also be uh, um, balancing the short-term financial pressures with the long-term financial pressures. So it's very important you know, to make that assessment and really know uh, how to steer the ship into the right direction of sustainability. And the other challenge that businesses often you know, face in adopting ESG is reliability of ESG data. And, you know, to mitigate this, you know, it's very important to ensure, you know, like proper verification is in place, you know, um, including, you know, third party verification.